H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys supports 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time pay, lifetime access to live classes and videos. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For free demo class, visit h2kinfosys.com. Okay, so to recap on the on the selenium, like we discussed, um, about the very basics, like uh, how you're going to install this um, Eclipse, and then we started um, doing some basic tests. I think uh, that's where like um, we have some issues like with audio, then we stop. So here, like to continue on that, um, basically, like say so uh, maybe today and um, next session we are going to work with um, some of the Selenium tests. Then we're going to, then after we are going to run the Selenium test from Jenkins. So we are going to, we are going to run through the. We're going to build mainly a Maven project and we try to run them, integrate with Jenkins um, through Maven. So we're going to run those builds. So to start with, um, like, anyway, like once you open the Eclipse uh, on the left, select like you see, um, you're going to create a workspace and that's like you're going to start with the Eclipse, the one that we discussed in our last session. And then you can start uh, creating um, the project, probably like the one that you're looking at here, um, you can also do this way. Um, you can, because most of these automation projects, right, we talk about uh, the framework, so like um, mainly the intention of framework is um, to, I know like, because um, let me give you some introduction, like why we do these uh, frameworks, because that's a good to review or good to know. So mainly for easy maintenance purpose, right? Uh, the framework, like whatever the automation frameworks, like we 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 discuss, uh, it's a uh, the definition, like we can say, it's a setup for process or the standards or the guidelines, but we can say. That's what like, uh, we are going to come up with these uh, frameworks. And part of these uh, guidelines, and so if you look at like why we need this framework, say why can't we just uh, create some test scripts and then run them. The importance of this uh, frameworks is, um, you see like for the maintenance purpose, um, The maintenance is uh, easy with the help of these frameworks. The script maintenance, I would say the script maintenance is easy. And also, you are going to create mainly the reusability. Means you are going to create more of this, uh, the reusable components that way, just you're going to make use of reusable components when you develop the test scripts. So reusability is um, so reusable components, which are nothing but you can say the the methods, the functions, or the function libraries, whatever you say. So we're going to create more of these reusable components um, that can be shared, or we can say that are shared across the test that we know because you are going to use these reusable components um, or something like say would say the functions so these functions can be reused across the test script so yeah tomorrow like if something like you want to modify you're not going to modify each and every test script instead you're going to modify the functions that are called within the within the test script that we know the maintenance part is easy. Then what are these um, guidelines? Like we're, we're talking about the framework is a set of guidelines, but what 
what could be those um, guidelines so first you are going to create the part of this right you're going to create um, a well-defined the project uh, structure part of this so that means like see um, you're going to create a folder structure like this because going forward right so you're going to create a lot of files like the test scripts or your data files or something like C this one like you're going to create a folder structure like the function libraries like the other different folders like because whereas in in um, Java terminology we call it as the packages right so you're going to create different packages like this and you're going to save appropriate folders sorry appropriate files into the respective folders so for example the function library so here you're going to create a common function library so for example you see like here excel read right how to read data from external excel files so that way you're going to keep you're going to maintain all these common function libraries so that this function library contains different uh, different functions and those functions can be used in all the test scripts because the excel read is a common function right what are the test scripts that you're going to develop that function can be used across all the test scripts same in the case like you're going to create say object repository like say object information so because um, if you look at the web application right you will get different objects so you can create a um, you can create the object information like this that we know it's like if tomorrow like say this link is changed like I'll just basically like we can say the um, variables and the values right so you're going to use these variables in in the test scripts tomorrow if something is changed then now you're going to change the value here so instead of looking at where you mentioned this value right in the test script just all you come here in this object information this um, link and you are going to change the values here that we know that the things will be easy otherwise if you keep maintain this hard-coded values in the test scripts right like you develop 100 test scripts again you're going to modify all your all 100 test scripts so that we know the maintenance is very painful so in order to avoid those kind of things right you're going to define a variables like this and you're going to use those across uh, the test scripts so this select like object information you're going to create one class file and maintain all this uh, object information so in the case like you have a the scripts folder that's where you're going to develop actual test scripts by using these function libraries by using this object information and you're going to develop the test scripts so this is a container for your test scripts and the test data this is the main thing right where you're going to isolate the test script um, with the data right because you don't want to mix the data and the test script because the reason is tomorrow like if you want to modify um, modify your test with different uh, data right say for example if you look at uh, here So if you if you look at say you're going to maintain a data like this, right? And then you are isolating the data and you're going to use this data across your test scripts. So you are isolating, that's mainly the concept behind this, um, like uh, maybe you might have heard about like data driven framework, right? So you're going to isolate your test data from the test script. That's one of the popular frameworks see data driven framework so the name itself says right so data drives the test data driven framework in other words you're going to isolate the data from the test means you're going to maintain all the test data in some external files okay 
like it should be an Excel or something. So you're going to maintain all your test data in these sectional files and then the, the script is going to read all these data from these sectional files. So that's why like part of this uh, framework, first thing like you're going to create um, some project structure and also we're going to follow certain coding standards because you're going to develop a um, lot of scripts, right? So you're going to develop some coding standards while you do the scripting. That way whoever develop the test scripts, once they follow the standards, it mainly it improves the readability of the test scripts. Right, why you follow these cooling standards is it improves the readability of the test. That means whoever looked at your test script, they can easily understand by if you follow these coding standards. For example, like say whenever you do the scripting, right? So then what you're going to do is like you're going to put um, something like a commenting, like what this function is going to do, what this um, test is going to do. You're going to write more of these uh, commenting sections that improves definitely the readability of the test script. Similarly, you're going to declare a lot of um, variables. Okay. So that uh, it's a good practice, right? So you declare a variable and then you're going to assign the variables. So these are all certain coding standards like what we follow part of these um, guidelines. Okay, and here like anyway, we're going to come up with this um, data driven uh, the framework like so we create a folder like like you can you can create a uh, a project like say what are that uh, the framework name you can give a data driven framework or whatever so that's a parent folder and then you're going to create different um, um, subfolders basically like you're going to create a um, a project to, to begin with, right? You're going to start with a, a Java project. Okay. Then here, like, you're going to give the project name, say, data driven. Uh, like, you can also simply say the framework or what the data driven framework. And then, under that, like, you're going to, it's going to create this. Uh, then other this SRC, see the source. Then here like, we're going to create um, different um, packages. Like to begin with, create a new package. Then this should be the function libraries. Okay, just going to create different uh, folder structure. Then actual uh, test or the scripts and this could be the data okay then so object repositories Object information. Sorry. Okay. And so this one, like you're going to create the folder structure, and then each, you're going to create now different the class files under each package. So what happens is it's going to create different uh, the folders when you go back. And look at um, the the structure, right? So it's going to sh it's going to show you, like, say how these uh, folder structures are creating under that uh, framework. You see the framework and as I see the other different folders that gets created under the system. Okay. Then you start creating. Um, different files under each folder say for example like okay, a okay let's begin with this say start creating before we talk about the data and all this stuff right let's start creating a simple test so you're going to create a new class file and then 
Um, so you can say it's not actually a open application. Okay. So there's a test like you want to create. And basically, like, so you're going to import uh, all your um, the um, Selenium reference libraries. That's going to just right click, then associate all those functional uh, Selenium libraries. So go to this um, build path, you're going to add all those external libraries. So add external jobs. Like the last session, we, we talked right? what are the different things like you need um, you know, to download. So basically go to that um, Selenium website and you're going to download the required libraries. So basically you get um, Okay, so these are all the different, so the libraries, Selenium related. So you're going to associate. Okay. Just you are associating the Selenium. Libraries too. So that when like you see now you get uh, all this uh, reference libraries section that gets associated to your project. So now you should be able to generate. Um, so like this is the new class file, right? And here, so you're going to create different. Um, the, the methods like, OK, so you're going to start with say launch application something. The method name, and now so you're going to anyway. Like so, this is the kind of syntax like you guys um, know because it's a Java syntax. So you're going to open and close color brackets, and you're going to write your scripting stuff like okay, how you're going to use. So main thing like is the default like you can use the Firefox drivers or the IE um, Google Chrome. So basically, like, uh, those are the drivers again. Even we talked in our, in our last session. Again, there are different uh, drivers that, that supports. So just to make sure, like you got all those drivers uh, downloaded, and give it in your in one of the folders, so that you are going to point in the driver information. Say, so to start with, like, so, okay, so let me copy this simple function. Then I'm going to explain. Stop writing everything to save time. Okay. So this like okay, we're gonna talk about this stuff in a moment. Right, so all right. So public void and uh, function name uh, then Basically, this is what actually you're going to use in order to, say, launch your application in the Firefox browser. Because if you're using the latest version of this uh, Firefox browsers, so you have to set this property. That means like you're going to download this um, Gecko driver. Otherwise, like um, if you're using the latest versions of Firefox, so you may get this uh, test run. It will give you some errors, so that um, just to make sure you have this um, driver also downloaded. Okay, so if you go to this folder, right? So see. See here, like say downloaded all those drivers. That's where like I'm pointing to the test script. So I driver then Chrome, by default, like it has a Firefox, but Firefox need this one if you're using the latest versions of this Firefox browser. So my, the test is pointing to these browsers. Okay. And then, so 
now once you set that path then here like you say you're going to create an instance like say web driver and you're using that instance in order to open this URL okay just using the get method and you're using whatever that URL just to make sure like here you don't put any www something so you're going to start with like STP and then gmail.com so if you put www then it gives um, errors so it should be like this right this is a simple test and here once you write just a couple of lines right what browser you want to launch and what's your the application URL because obviously like you're testing web applications and in order to run this see you see whenever you right click and then say it didn't give any option like say you want to run this um, how you want to run this like basically that's why like you're going to put these annotations right so because the, just you're going to mention like okay this is a test I want to run so this is an annotation and the moment you see here you see that there's a red color line right under that so that means you are going to import some because you want to run this as a JUnit test right then it's giving in these different options and then you're going to select say JUnit so that the data is really going away so that it's going to import that um, JUnit package into the test now if you right click and then say run as now you see JUnit test don't worry about this test ng we're going to talk later so you see now it's um, running as a JUnit test then if you run so that uh, so this is the class going to run so that you should be able to see so it opens that and then we should be able to see the browser launched and you should see that um, page is opened so that's all like the this is like the simple test like just to make sure you got this um, library files are associated selenium and jar files all the jar files and if you're using the latest version of Firefox, this is what you have to set the property and then create an instance and then mention the path like which application you want to open. Okay. So this way, like you can play with any web app, any web applications, creating some of these um, basic tests. Any questions for did you ever clear this basic stuff? How you associate your jars? Okay, so at the end, like anyway, like you see um, the status of your test execution. So here it says. Um, Past. Okay, so that we just see everybody just you should create this framework because we're going to create some data files and then we talk about this like function libraries and object information and write some tests based on these test artifacts. Okay, and the next thing like so you should be able to create your data. So using this Excel file and you should be able to save it. So that's sort of like you're going to create a let's start with creating some test data. Then we'll see how you're going to read this data. Okay, say for example here this one I'm going to say
So mainly like we need two parameters here, browser type and then for set application URL. Then here again, going to put right. So this is the URL. Then you're going to save this folder into the data. So basically that has to go into this data folder. So you can right click and then if you if you can go to this uh, system explorer, right, then it takes you to that path. And this is the folder, like, right? see, this will you have to save this Excel file. Okay, so I'm going to save this one, say test data file. Let me close this one. So that when you go back and say refresh this, so that you should be able to see that um, Excel file refreshed into this folder. At this is the your data file. Then you should be able to create some um, object information. Right, so you're going to create a class file. Right, and then you're going to define all those um, variables. You see, like this, feel like you're going to create all those variables. String. I'm going to copy this Okay, so what I want is, um, probably like we're going to test with different application. So to begin with, um, so we're going to use instead of uh, like the Gmail, let's use this website. Okay, so that's the URL.
just say these are all just the variables and the values like what you assign. So we're going to talk about this uh, function lib um, later, like how we're going to call these function libraries into this path. So right now, how we're going to read this data, right? What are the data that you already prepared? How to read this data and also this object information into the test. So here, we're going to first you need to read the data from Excel. So for that, like you need um, a library like say JXL. So if you look at, you're going to associate that one also to the project. Then Java build path, add the external libraries. So, so you need um, this JXL, okay? Just you're going to download this JXL so that this this contains um, some external jars. Just also say that because that that library is needed in order to read data from Excel. Okay, because all our test data is in this Excel sheet, right? Now you have to read the content of this. Excel file using that library. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy just those three lines then we'll go over. So here like you're going to so here like see once you put that right the the JXL then you're going to use that see um, these are all the variables in a way, like the file, and this way, like you're going to point where your test data, the Excel file is located. Okay, so this is the one. So you have to put uh, to forward slash. and the file name. I think that's just test data, yeah. So that's the file name. Okay. Then, so you're going to read the workbook now from the Excel. So you're going to you're going, you have to get this uh, workbook. Like this, this this is the workbook, right? The workbook contains different sheets in the Excel. Like you're going to read the content of this sheet. First, you need to get the workbook, and then from that uh, workbook, you're going to read what are that. Um, the sheet name. Like here, you're using, you're reading these sheets by index, right? Say, suppose like if you want to read the, the first Excel, then it should be zero, one, and two. Like you can also read this Excel sheets by the index or by name, okay? By name or by the index. Then you're going to read the um, content of the cells. Okay? So what are that um, the cell values? So that um, that one I just you should be able to input the data what you're getting. So here, Okay, so then get sheet. Like, let's put uh, a sheet. Okay. 
So you're going to read the content of that cell, okay, using the get contents method. Then you should be able to see, basically like see first thing like you're going to read uh, what are the browser type, right? So that when you're going to launch that particular browser and if you put here zero comma one and zero comma two second column, so that it's going to get uh, the URL. We would say the URL. Anyway, by default, we are using the Firefox browser. So that way, instead of hard coding the values in your test script, right? You are trying to read the contents from Excel. Okay, so this is like you can read data from Excel and then you're going to get the input from the Excel to your test. So what I would um, suggest is like say everybody just start um, creating this at least some of this uh, framework. Don't don't worry about uh, reading this data and all the stuff they're going to. So we're going to discuss later. At least start beginning developing the the test script. I hope everybody installed the Eclipse right. Anyone having any issues to install Eclipse? Then what you can do is just start 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 developing this some of these basic tests. Then we are going to continue with um, more and more scripting in this framework. Um, You know, next session. So probably like we're going to develop a few test scripts this way that we know just you can build at least um, multiple test scripts in one Maven file that gives actual real experience, right? Say how we can execute say multiple tests in a Maven project. So we do that stuff. Um, but uh, I would like, I would prefer like you can take this application and then develop uh, some test scripts. I hope like everybody having some basic understanding of this um, scripting, right? Okay, that's what my assumption. Okay. Yeah, just uh, start doing the test scripts. And Jupyter, like, say, 